Okay, so we're at the um, end of the first day of the 50th anniversary celebrations of the British Musical Society and we're very fortunate to have Ruth Maddock here who um, finished the day really with quite a fantastic little interview that you um, just did there, um, which kind of sort of spanned like your whole career really, didn't it? Um, from You started off talking about, um, actually about the, the, the actual hall itself. So, um, yes. Have you been here before? No, I haven't. And I'm absolutely delighted because there are musicals on this theme. In fact, there is um, a theatre that I was trying to desperately save in Swansea, very, very similar to this, but nobody was interested. You know, and they take so much money to refurb and put back. That one was going to cost in the region of 15 million. And, that, and this probably is going on for it, you know, and more probably. Um, but they need to be saved, in my opinion, because they are the heritage of entertainment. Mm. They're, they're so important. And I'm very sorry that it is not on the curriculum of every degree uh, in the arts, because it is, it is so important that we keep the heritage. It was the first time populist entertainment was ever affordable you see it was affordable to people and that's why it's so important and you're talking earlier about um the fact that you trained at rada but then you actually went into variety which mm. was kind of mm. you know developed mm. from music hall mm. and that you you actually really enjoyed that experience mm. could you tell us a bit about that because i think it feeds in quite well with what you were just saying yes. really well I, I i was just so privileged to fall into it i realized that probably my personality was what they called, in my day, an ingenue. Uh, but, uh, so that means a sort of actress that could sing a bit and dance a bit, you know. Um, and wasn't a chocolate box. Because remember, uh, we had still the leading ladies that were chocolate boxes with superb voices, you know. Um, well, I had none of that, really. Uh, but I decided that um, perhaps I would fit the ingenue roles. So I, I went into the, the folder roles. Now, the folder roles, again, was an established company of players. And it had the great Jack Tripp in it, who was a wonderful dame, a wonderful musical artist. They all came from musical um, because... Kathleen West, who was also a leading light, very famous um, comedian, uh, but also could do pathos. You see, that comes from the background of musical. And they all did musical. Because the, uh, uh, the musical sort of more or less finished being called musical between the 1914, uh, no, uh, 19, 1918 and the Second World mm, War. Mm. It more or less demised and it became variety. And do you know why? No. Because you had still lifes, nude still lifes on the stage, and they weren't allowed to move because you were actually then violating the laws. So they're like these tableaus. <laughs> and they were in between, you know, good acts. So that was what happened and to musical. That's what happened to right. musical, you see. Um, and and it, <laughs> I mean, the windmill mm. was extremely famous mm. for this, which the Van Dams had. But the Van Dams didn't have it until about the 1920s, you see. So that's when it all sort of altered. We mm. had these nude sort of uh, tableaus. Right. And, and variety developed. <laughs> and variety, as variety developed from that. Filled the gap. That. But all these people that I worked with had known the end of um, musical. I, I once worked and fed for a year Max Wall. Now, he was fascinating. Um, his mother uh, was a soprano. And he decided that he was going to have a, a singer in his act. So I was on the bill singing The Boy I Love Is Up in the Gallery or whatever it was. And um, he decided that I would be in his act. Well, it was fascinating. 
It really was. What a again, like Norman Wisdom, they were they were versatile. He played the piano brilliantly. He had been brought up in music hall uh, uh, before the uh, First World War. His mother and father, and they taught him just like the circus does today with their youngsters. He was taught how to do eccentric dancing, how to play uh, the piano in between the two um, houses. So he kind of learned all and the skills. Learned, uh, yes, he learned yeah. literally in the musical. Wow. Fascinating. And what was it like coming from a background like RADA, where you'd been trained you know, as a classical actress, to, to go into that, which is, in a way, a totally different tradition? Well, I, I, I felt it was freer. Um, and they didn't take themselves so seriously. That's the bit I liked, mm. because I don't really take myself very seriously. Um, never have done. Uh, I like a bit of respect, mm. but that's about all, really, you know. And I sometimes don't get that from my five grandchildren, you know, <laughs> let alone my own children, who tend to pat me on the head. Um, but um, I think that, um, for me, I think I took the right road. Mm. I took the right path, because I've enjoyed it. I can't say I haven't, because I just feel so privileged that I've had such a wonderful time for 50 years, 50 odd years. Isn't it? Wow, fantastic. <laughs> and I believe you're off to Wales um, tonight, is that uh, right? Yes, we've got to go back down to it. It took us about two and a half hours to find this place, I do have to say, but I won't forget it. Wow. And you will see me again down here because I won't forget it now. And I'm thrilled to bits that we actually found it. I really <laughs> am. <laughs> so are we, so are we. Uh, Ruth Maddock, thanks very much. Pleasure, Thank you. pleasure.